programme, originally made for Birmingham Advisory and Support Service, shows how two early year settings work towards the early learning goals. First, an independent day nursery that's embraced play-based learning. The house that Jack built is a private day nursery. Every early year setting is very different and that's the beauty of every early year setting. Children's play is their work. I think once people have absorbed that essential point, then they understand a lot more about how young children behave and how they need to learn. They need to learn through a lot of very wide experiences which are planned for them, but which enable them to develop at their own pace. I think when we look at the whole notion of the foundation stage, at first it may look um, rather intimidating and formal, but actually when we look into um, the new documentation, what we actually see is very clear aims and principles that are going to guide us in, in, in working towards the early learning goals. Um, but more than that, what we do see is a very, very strong emphasis on play. Isn't that excellent how you're doing that? Good quality play has been happening in settings all around the country for a very long time. What this actually does is to put an endorsement on that play as a powerful vehicle for learning and almost to just give us permission to get on with it. What's new about it, if anything, is we are now all signing up to the same piece of documentation, the same aims and principles. I think we have to be aware that when young children come into an exciting and stimulating setting for the first time, they want to do everything and they want to experience everything and that, that sort of um, butterflying and flitting is acceptable when children come into a setting. We followed one butterfly to find out how he spent 30 minutes of free play. How would you support him? The on-screen clock will help you to see how long was spent at each activity. As the child develops, as they, um, as they become more involved in the activities and experiences that are on offer, I think the role of the practitioner is to talk about ways in which they can engage a child, they can look at their interests, they can work with a child to look at staying on task longer, and they can review with that child what experiences they have had and where they would like to go next. At Castle Vale Nursery, the children's learning comes directly from their imaginative play. Castlevale Nursery School is um, a nursery school which has part-time places. It's run by the local education authority. We have 60 children in the morning and 60 children in the afternoon. To anybody who just came in off the street, they'd think perhaps, oh, we've just put anything out on tabletops for the children to play with. But in actual fact, our planning is um, very structured. And just to remind everybody of the aims, um, to develop positive attitudes towards a healthy and active life. 
We do already map out what we want to cover throughout the year when we do our long-term planning, so that when we come to our medium-term planning, we can actually plan around the activity and then look for the goal that we feel encompasses that activity that we have planned for the children. It would be nice to move on to the healthy eating. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So if we take a food focus, because mm -hmm. last week it was... Yeah. Yeah. When we plan, we plan the activity first and we feel it is absolutely fine then to find the early learning goal that is appropriate to that activity. We wouldn't start with the early learning goal and think, how are we going to achieve this? It's a pan called a wok. A wok. Should we say wok together? Wok. And I'm going to show you something else from the imaginative play. Barbecue. Good, good idea. Yes, you do use these when you have a barbecue. What am I using to eat my food with? Yes, they are sticks. And then chopsticks. Well done. These are real noodles. But would you want to eat noodles like this? No. Pass these noodles round. You have to cook them. And we're going to cook them in this bowl with lots of water. We're not going to cook them in the, um, pan. what did we call that? Wok. Wok. Frying pan. Yeah, the frying pan, which is called the wok. wok. We're going to cook them in the microwave. And are you going to be able to cook? Yeah. You need this recipe can pour that on your head. Because we're going to, going to, to cook these noodles. Really? Microwave, that's right. And we're going to make real noodles for people who are ordering Chinese takeaways. So, Laura and Jasmine, would you like to come and cook some noodles? You would. And Laura's got one, and we'll put the bowl down. As some of the children come to and leave the imaginative play area, others have joined Sue for a more focused teaching session. Chinese, because we've been cooking some things in the Chinese today, haven't we, Liam? What were you waiting for? Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what this one might be called? Mm. Bean sprouts. I know mm. that. Did you know that? Yeah. You didn't tell me, did you? No. Well, have you eaten bean sprouts? No. Do you know what they taste like? What would they taste like, do you think? They're tiny. They look nice, don't they? Dean. Now, I'm going to move over here. Very hot. I'm going to ask Jasmine to very carefully give them a stir. Well, I'm not sure if they're quite ready yet. We might need to put them in a little bit longer. Have you been stirring yours, Ryan? Yeah, we'll pop them in in a minute when we're sure these are ready. Do they feel soft or do they feel hard? Soft. Shall we mix in some of this lovely chopped suey stuff? Yeah, would you take the lid off whilst I hold this hot bowl? Pop that on the floor. Would you like to tip a little bit into that bowl, please? And then Jasmine can give it a stir round. You can turn that on tight in case it falls over. Thanks, Laura. Thank you very much. Right, now then, shall we get a silver container? And then look at that lady. She's been waiting ages for a noodle. Have you been waiting a lot? Yeah. Have you got a number? Four. Well, go and sit and Feel it. Mm. 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 Mm.
Can you say that down there? Yeah. yeah water, that's a trick. Chess. Cat. Oh, I put my name on there. That's lovely. Good I girl. You're going to write your carrot on it as well. Yeah. Write yeah. carrot as well. Can you put it up? My To make sure that we are um, keeping a check on everything that the children are doing, we have got a very comprehensive system, a record keeping system, so that we can keep a check on what the, the children's skills are in um, language and literacy, in mathematics, in their knowledge and understanding of the world. We've got a system for recording that for each child and it enables us to see where the gaps are. Not only the gaps in each child's individual development, but also the gaps in our overall planning. If we are missing certain things out, by looking at the assessment system properly and analysing it, we can see what we need to offer next. Because planning should be informed by assessment. The key message I would like to leave people with is that the early learning goals can be delivered through well-planned play opportunities. We are dealing with children at what is probably the most important stage in their life. And if at this stage we can give them a firm foundation, positive attitudes towards learning, and confidence and self-reliance using play as the vehicle, then there is no doubt we will vastly improve standards. <laughs> <laughs> 